So somehow I ended up being a professional blogger and YouTuber. Now, despite this channel at the time of recording this video having about 8,000 subs, it actually is over a $3,000 income source for me if you can take into like the ad revenue and the affiliate marketing and then in combination with that from my uh, websites which make me anywhere between like three to six, that kind of range, on average, I'm making between like seven and ten thousand dollars a month, believe it or not. Uh, and so, in this video, I really just want to create a really helpful video on how to make money with blogging. Like, how does the blogging aspect of my online business work? I just want to explain everything that you need to know as a beginner. So, this video is going to be quite long, so I definitely recommend maybe get a cup of coffee, strap in, and let's begin. What's up everybody, it's David from WebsiteCreatePro.com. So let's get started with how to make money blogging and to start we have to begin at the very beginning and that is to actually start a blog. I know, rocket science, you actually have to start a blog to make money from blogging, but, but that's why I create all these helpful tutorial videos on this channel about how you properly start a blog. But starting the blog is just one key aspect. It's not the, it's not the most important part. The actual, the most important part is choosing the right topic and niche as well as the specific platform that you wanna build your blog on. Now, personally, I highly recommend that you go with WordPress over something like Wix or Squarespace. It's not to say that you can't blog with Wix or Squarespace, you totally can. You absolutely can. It's not, they're not that, they're, they've gotten a lot better over time, but still, WordPress is king if you've been wanting to start a blog. Now, topic selection is something I really wanna emphasize in this beginner section of my little video here on how to make money with blogging because uh, this is the part that everybody, screws up <laughs> every time and it's i'm guilty of this as well because you think like oh i don't have any skills i don't know anything so i know what i'm going to do i'm going to start a blog on dating advice or personal development and i'm going to talk about how to live authentically you and blah 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 because i did that okay so like my very first website was called superawesomedating.com and it was a complete disaster that made no money and then my next website that i started after that was edgeofdavid.com and i was thinking like oh i'm going to build a big personal development website and again, that completely failed. And so what I want you to do when it comes to like topic selection is that you need to take a step back and think about a few things. In general, for your very first website, if you want to have a strong chance of it being successful is pick a topic that you actually kind of know and understand. And if you genuinely are like, I don't know anything, I don't have any skills or interests, well, then that just means that you need to go into the world and live your life a little bit more. For example, like I went to Thailand in 2011 and I was an English teacher abroad for a few years from 2011 to about 2014. I was able to translate that specific experience into an ESL website where I talk about teaching English abroad. And that was my very first successful website, why? Because you can't just be someone who's living in Texas or Kansas and then, oh, I'm gonna start a blog on how to teach English in Japan. It's like, well, <laughs> like you've never done it before. And so that's kind of the mistake that people make where either they're an echo, they just start a website where they're just an echo of a more popular website, which I kind of cover in another video here about Bold and Determined, which is like one of the most copied websites I've ever seen. Or again, people start with a dating website or a personal development website. And so to have success, you really just need to think about like, what do you know how to do that other people don't know how to do, that other people are kind of like willing to give you money to pay, uh, Etc. Okay, because that's how you kind of can have a chance of building a successful blog. So three tips to help you choose your niche for your blog. And so I want to, I want you to stop, please. I beg you, don't start a dating blog. Don't start a personal development blog. Don't tell me how to live my authentic life. I beg you, please don't do that. Instead, I want you to stop. Take a step back and think about your skill set and what you really know and understand and think about like where you can create content on and provide value because the way a blog makes money is that you're able to provide value, okay? And value specifically means that you're just a small piece of the solution for someone else. That's it. That's it. That's all you need to do with a blog. You just need to create really helpful content that you're just a small piece of the solutions, you know, and where you help other people with your content. And it's really just that simple. And so you're able to create really good content if you start a website on a topic that you know and understand. Like I started a website on penny stocks. It was called smartpennystocktips.com. And <laughs> it was a complete disaster because like, I don't know anything about penny stocks. I was like, oh, the ad revenue is really high. Oh, there's tons of affiliate products. That's a great topic to get in. Okay, I'm gonna do it. And then it's just like, oh, paying for writers. And it's like, I don't know if this is correct or, you know, it wasn't fun, it wasn't enjoyable. And so you need to really stop and think about uh, creating content on a topic 
that you know and understand because you're just going to enjoy the process more and you're just able to create content because that's number two. Can I create 100 blog posts on this topic? Just ask yourself that. Like, is this a topic where I could easily come up with 100 quality blog posts that are keyword rich? And so, but keywords are just like phrases that people type into Google, okay? So like if you type in like Bluehost review, that's a keyword. And so you wanna think about like, are there 100 plus topics that I could just create helpful content on and find a bunch of different keywords that people are actually uh, looking for, et cetera. And then my last tip is just to find relevant niche websites that are gonna be your competitors. If you think that you're gonna find some topic and there's no websites on it, you're like, yeah. Yeah, I'm so smart. Like, no, you're not smart. There's no, <laughs> there's no websites on this topic because there's no money to be made. You definitely want to find uh, relevant other websites that are of like a small to medium size. They look like a website that maybe would have been started by, you know, another person. Okay, what I mean is like you don't want to do something where you're you're doing like keyword research for like eye care, and all you do is find these big authority websites on like med from medical websites like WebMD or et cetera, or you're doing some type of like uh, health and fitness website and you just see men's health ranking for everything. When you see things like that, that means that's a bad topic because the competition's really high. Now, there's nothing wrong with jumping into a topic where the competition's really high, but you have to understand that that's going to be a very, very, very long-term play. Like WebsiteCreatePro.com is in a very competitive topic, like how to create a website and how to start a blog. <laughs> like that is crazy competitive because there's tons of money to be made. Okay, go niche. Instead of starting a generic photography website, think like think about like iPhone photography, for example. Like that's more of a niche topic. And then do keyword research on that. And then look, are there other websites that are focused on that specific topic? And that may be your angle in, okay? So those are the three things I want you to take into consideration when choosing your niche. Oh man, I need some water. And last, once you have your blog topic already selected, it's time to actually launch your blog. And you can follow any one of my long form tutorials on how to create a blog, but you need three main things. You need a domain name, you need a shared hosting account, and you need a content management system. So a domain name, I definitely recommend getting a domain name at a domain name registrar because they provide free Whois protection and you get the best price around. You get the lowest price compared to getting a domain name through a web host, okay? My domain name register of choice is Namecheap. And then I recommend getting a shared hosting account with Bluehost, which is the number one recommended web host by WordPress. Now, I recommend starting with Bluehost. And then once you're able to grow your website to like a thousand visitors a day, 2000 visitors a day, that kind of level, then you can move away from Bluehost. I, re I would recommend like WPX hosting for more larger established websites, but you don't need to worry about that until you get to that level. So starting with Bluehost is fine. And then you need a content management system, and there's actually quite a few, but WordPress is the most popular because it's really geared for blogging. It makes publishing content easy and logical. There's tons of different themes, plugins, support, and it's just designed for a beginner to be very easy to use, and that's it, okay? So that's all you need. You need those three parts. So I recommend just get your domain name at Namecheap, sign up to Bluehost, get a shared hosting account, and then launch your blog with WordPress, and that's it. So once you launch your blog with WordPress and a shared hosting account, uh, it's time to design the layout of your website. Now, in general, what I recommend is that you kind of model after WebsiteCreatePro.com because that's personally how I design all of my niche websites. So in general, I like to make a homepage and I like to make the homepage into sort of like a visual menu for the website. We're at the very top of the website. I like to have a clear call to action that explains what the website is about. And it's a call to action. Action meaning like tell people to do something, click something, buy something, subscribe to something, etc. Then as people scroll down, I like to introduce like the best in class content, so to speak. So I usually like to go ahead and create like the most best authoritative guides on a specific topic for regarding whatever the website is about. And then underneath that, I like to have like my latest and greatest blog posts. Now that's a classic layout. You can adjust it as you want, but in general, that's kind of like what I would recommend for the homepage for any type of niche website. And then obviously I go ahead and create an about page, contact page, legal pages, resources, any type of like paid courses. Maybe I'll be an affiliate for like Udemy or Skillshare and direct people there. Uh, and then also like a dedicated blog post section. And then for my individual blog posts, I personally just like a single column design I do not use sidebars on any of my websites. I use breadcrumbs and then I just, again, just blog, create really helpful content. And that's in general how I personally lay out my websites. Now, the actual design of your website is going to be controlled by the theme that you choose to use. And WordPress themes are just tools, okay? And so just pick the tool that makes the most sense to you that you wanna learn and understand. Now, I have five recommendations that I suggest that you check out with regards to themes. So number one is the Divi theme. So the Divi theme is probably the most popular premium theme. 
because it has the one of the best visual drag and drop editors around. Uh, another theme that's really good is the Asha theme. Asha is, is the most popular and most downloaded theme for WordPress, believe it or not. And I have a tutorial on this channel about how to make a really good looking website just using Asha, the free version of Asha, because it does have a premium version, but you can edit it with just the free version and using the default Gutenberg editor. Uh, my next theme that I really like is the Themify Ultra, because I personally use Themify Ultra. If you're wondering like, hey, how did you design WebsiteCreatePro.com? I'm using Themify Ultra and I really like it. Now, in terms of a free theme that I really like. Uh, I also use Themify Simple on a few different websites because it has a nice clean layout. It has most of the features of Ultra. It's not as feature rich. Ultra really is like a step up over Themify Simple. But with Themify Simple, you can functionally get a good looking website up and running quickly and easily. And last is the Hello theme with Elementor. I think this is a powerful one-two combination for designing your website. Now, Hello theme and Elementor, you definitely need to pay for Elementor Pro because the free version, you can't create a, you can't edit your blog post section and a bunch of other limitations. So you have to go pro version with that. But if you do, it's going to be you know completely feature rich and you have com total control and flexibility over how you design your website. Oh, and I also suggest just checking out the default WordPress themes like the 2020 theme, 2021 theme, etc. WordPress lately has been doing a really good job about coming out with like completely free themes that work really well with the Gutenberg editor. Now again, you don't have like as much control with those free themes as you do with the more premium themes like Themify Ultra, Divi, et cetera, in terms of like changing colors and fonts, et cetera. But if you're looking for like a free option, I just suggest like Themify Simple and all the default WordPress themes. So how do you get traffic to your blog? The big secret is to create content people want. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I always say that jokingly because like you'll see in like Facebook groups, particularly like SEO groups, people always asking like, what's the super secret link building technique? And like, there's no secret. <laughs> There's no secret. You have to be create a very helpful blog, create a very helpful website, and create content people are actually want and are looking for. Because the mistake that beginners always make is A, to start a personal development blog or a dating blog, or to be an echo of a more popular website, or to go after a topic that is incredibly competitive and it's difficult to get rankings, or they create a content on like a website like me with smart penny stock, stock tips where they just think they can make money and they don't have any interest in the website. And so if you don't make any of those mistakes and you're picking a topic that you think is like you could build a website on, you've done proper like you know niche selection, you've gone through the process of like, okay, is this a good topic? There's other smaller websites on this topic. There's no like big, super massive authority website that's ranking for everything. If and once you find that, then just create content people want. That's it. So how do you do that? You have to do keyword research. And keyword research just means finding specific phrases that people are actually looking for and then create content to help that. Like there's a reason why I created like Namecheap versus GoDaddy. Like I have a video on called Namecheap versus GoDaddy and a blog post about Namecheap versus GoDaddy. Why? Because that's a keyword people are actually looking for and then I can make money by being an affiliate for GoDaddy and Namecheap, okay? So that's, that's the big secret. So you have to pick the right topic. Biggest mistake people make is that you pick the wrong topic. But if you pick the right topic, then it's just a matter of time. Being consistent, doing the work, finding keyword phrases that people are looking for. Now, how do you actually find keyword phrases? So I have two recommendations. You should use keywords everywhere. This is my one of my favorite Chrome extension plugins, where anytime you do like a keyword research, like GoDaddy versus Namecheap, it's gonna come up on the side, a bunch of other relevant phrases that people are potentially looking for. And so then you can just jump into those specific phrases and then maybe you can find some like long phrase or short phrase, whatever, about uh, about a topic that like, oh, I didn't even think of that. That's a great idea. I also want to recommend that you check out SCMrush and Hrefs. So these are paid services, but like unlike web hosting, you don't have to pay for them forever. Like you could just sign up for a month and do competitive research. This is why everything kind of cycles back to topic selection uh, because it really truly is that important. So if you've done proper topic selection, you found a few other websites, that are like of medium size, they're like they look like they would be your competitors, etc. Then you can plug those type of websites into SEMrush and Ahrefs to see like what content is ranking for those specific websites. And so just you know, follow their lead. So if they have a bunch of different blog posts on these specific topics, then you know like, okay, if I start a website on this topic, I need to create content on this, 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 this. And that's something that personally that I like to do whenever I start a brand new niche website. That's usually how I go about kind of figuring out like my first 20 blog posts. So in general, like I'll start a niche website and then I'll create again those authority guides 
that I talked about earlier, like those best in class authority guides after those are completed. And then for the first 20 blog posts, I'll just do competitive research. And then after I've gone through all the topics that my competitors have created content on, then that's when I do like my own personal keyword research of like Google autocomplete, uh, keywords everywhere, you know, and that sort of thing. And that's how you want to approach it as well. And last, I want you to check out Google search engine console. So you have to install Google analytics on your website, and then you can verify your site with Google search engine console. What this service does from Google, and it's completely for free, is it tells you how your website is ranking within Google. It tells you like what keyword phrases are actually driving traffic to your website. It tells you what specific blog posts are ranking and where, and it just tells you like relevant keyword phrases like this piece of content is ranking, I don't know, number 28. And then it's also getting traffic for all these various other phrases. And it's really helpful because sometimes one, you can learn how to better optimize your content, but two, you can also find like keyword phrases that people are actually typing in that are actually driving traffic to your website. And then maybe you'll find a keyword phrase that like, you don't even have a blog post on this or a video on this. And it's like driving traffic to your website. And you're like, oh, boom. Okay, I'm gonna create a piece of content on that. And so that's why Google Search Engine Console is really helpful because from a technical analysis, it tells you like issues with your website, but it also just tells you like where your content is ranking, what keywords you're ranking for. Then it gives you ideas about how to better optimize your pieces of content, as well as just like keyword phrases that your website is not even optimized for that's getting traffic. Oh boy, this video is getting long. Make sure to hit that like button if you're enjoying the video so far. So anyways, I just want to tell you to focus on a different traffic source. So everything we just covered is really for Google search, okay? It's to optimize your content, find content that people are ranking, create really awesome content so you can get that number one, two, three ranking within Google to get that organic search engine traffic. And there's a reason why I create videos here on YouTube because YouTube is the biggest, or the second biggest, <laughs> second biggest search engine in the world. And so I can blog and I can make videos and I get a lot of attention for free without having to run any type of paid ad. And so that's kind of like what you need to focus on. Now it just depends. It depends on your topic and depends on like what you like. So first off, you can check out Facebook. And Facebook is good, but in general, Facebook is now pay to play, so to speak. So I know there's people like Drew Binsky or Nas Daily, and they were able to build like an organic uh, audience just by posting really good videos on Facebook. For I can tell you though, for everyone else, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Facebook is pay to play, okay? So you can get a ton of traffic to your channel, but you just gotta you know, run and promote your videos and your posts on Facebook. And most of you, I think, don't wanna do that. But again, I just wanna bring this up because that still is a viable option if you're willing to pay and promote your content. Next, we have Instagram, and Instagram is like kind of, it's great. I love Instagram, but it's really hard to get people off Instagram because Instagram is not designed for that. Like, there's a reason why, like, when you post an image to Instagram, you have to say like link in the bio. Why? Because you can't put links in the description of any type of image because Instagram doesn't want that. Instagram doesn't want people leaving Instagram, and so Instagram is great. You know, if you're like maybe a travel YouTuber and a travel blogger, then yeah, you want to be on Instagram as a way to connect more with your audience, but. In general, it's really hard to get people off Instagram. Next, we have Pinterest, and Pinterest is fantastic for driving traffic because it's a search engine for images. It's dominated by mostly women, so it's a female-centric platform. And so if you have a topic that's kind of geared a little bit more for women, you're going to do amazingly well. Now, personally, I don't use Pinterest because I don't like it. <laughs> I just don't like it. I don't get it. I don't enjoy using Pinterest. And that's why I like to focus more on video. But I just want to bring up Pinterest because there's a lot of tutorials here on YouTube about how to optimize your pins and how to get organic traffic on Pinterest, etc. For me, that's not my wheelhouse. My wheelhouse is making videos on YouTube and blog and blogging. And so also I want to mention like you don't have to be everywhere. You don't have to be everywhere because if you try to be everywhere, you're going to just do, <laughs> you're going to be nowhere. <laughs> if you try to be everywhere, you're nowhere because you're not going to be able to do anything really well because how are you going to compete against me if I'm creating videos and blog posts and then you're trying to do Facebook, Instagram, uh, you know, all this other stuff as a one man show. Now it's cool if you have a team, like if you have a team of people, then yeah, obviously you can do multiple things, but like as an individual, as a solo content creator, you need to focus on your, your Google SEO and you need to focus on an alternative traffic source to your blog. When you're in the beginning phases and you're kind of just, again, like a solopreneur, you're just a one man show. But as you grow, okay, and as you make money, then you can bring people on. If you wanna have hire people to manage your Facebook or hire people to manage Instagram, you wanna run paid ads on Facebook, you wanna have hire someone to do Pinterest for you, no problem, you can totally do that and that's an option. But again, just focus on two traffic sources when you're starting out and then expand from there as you start to make money and have success. 
Okay, so now you have your blog established, you have your content and you're getting traffic. Now it's time to actually make money with your blog. So now I wanna cover beginner ways to make money with a blog. Okay, so for beginners, what you really should be focusing on is display ads and affiliate marketing. So what affiliate marketing is, is just putting relevant products and services in front of an audience and then getting a commission. And so this is why you see all the time people promoting like Amazon Associates, for example. That's why you see like those pieces of content like you know, 10 best drones for YouTubers, you know, see like a blog post like that because they're making money from Amazon Associates by promoting products on Amazon. And so there's a lot of different affiliate programs that you can join. You, know, you just have to be aware in your niche, okay? So whatever topic you're on, you can definitely find relevant products and services to promote as an affiliate. You also wanna focus on display ads and display ads only work when you start to have traffic, okay? So in general, you need to at least like 10,000 page views a month to make any type of money with ads. So you don't need to focus on ads when you have a brand new website because you're not gonna make any money. Ads really start to scale once you get to like 100,000 page views a month, you know, 50 to 100,000 page views a month. So this is not something that like, uh, like don't worry about it when you just start your website. So you know, you know what a display ad is though too, because like whenever you visit a website and you see ads, those are display ads. When you watch a video here on YouTube and you see an ad, that's a display ad. And so display ads are still a great way to monetize any type of website and blog. And they work, where they work best on pieces of content that don't have any type of like uh, product or service. Maybe it's just a helpful resource. If it's that type of thing, then that, that's where you wanna kind of put ads on that specific page. So like if you have a page on your website where you have like the drone thing, like 10 best drones for YouTubers, I don't know, <laughs> something like that. Why, don't run ads. Don't run ads on that piece of content because like you're promoting Amazon Associates. You don't want to have like two competing sources of income, so to speak. Okay, you want people to focus in on one. You, I would rather, and I personally do this. I'd rather focus on having display ads on just any type of content that's just resource oriented. Like say you're creating a blog post where you're just answering a question. You know where you're answering something like uh, you know how to you know how to understand your you know YouTube analytics. If I had a blog post like that on websitecreatepro.com, there's no product I'm promoting. You know I, I can create that where it's like YouTube analytics tutorial. You know people are looking for that. So but like there's no product. <laughs> like you can there's no product to promote, and so you can just run ads on that piece of content. So anyways, those are the two primary beginner ways I suggest focusing: display ads and affiliate marketing. Intermediate ways to make money with your blog. So once you're ready to level up so to speak and get away from just doing affiliate marketing and just running display ads uh, this is what I recommend so first things first is you that you can do sponsored content and sponsored content only works when you have an audience and so like as your YouTube channel grows and as your blog grows in popularity companies and individuals will reach out to you wanting you to do some type of affiliate promotion for them oftentimes this will involve like hey I'll pay you to write a blog post I'll pay you to create a video I'll give you an affiliate link and it'll give you some type of special discount for your audience and so it's a win-win across the board now it's not the most passive thing but it, it's a win-win because like you get paid to create the content and you make money on the back end because if you do keyword research etc and you create content that people are looking for and it ranks organically in Google and on YouTube then you just make money you know, or organically and easily, but then you get paid to create the content. Now, after that, I would suggest checking out like lower ticket price products. Now, the reason I emphasize lower ticket is because if you wanna sell like a 297 course <laughs> from Teachable or something like that, you definitely need an email list. You need some. You need to like build trust and authority over time. But you can definitely make organic sales of just like a 1999 product or whatever, or a Udemy course or a Skillshare course way more easily and organically just by the free traffic that you're getting from like your YouTube channel or what Facebook or Pinterest or wherever you're getting your traffic from and search by just people finding what it is you're doing. And the last is also just to sell your time in some way and that's completely up to you. So you can either use something like Fiverr and have your own Fiverr gig and you can just make organic sales from Fiverr but also just drive traffic to Fiverr and then make sales and then provide a service. Or you can do something like Patreon, okay? So Patreon is not charity. Patreon is more like a, a membership website. And so again, Patreon's not passive, okay? Like you actually have to like have something, have a compelling reason why people would subscribe to your Patreon and then provide that service and provide that value over time. That's why I say it's like a kind of an intermediate thing. And so those are like, and that's why I say it's like selling your time because like Fiverr and Patreon, and I don't just mean to focus on Fiverr, you can do Upwork, whatever it is you wanna do. You know, just sell your time, sell your sell your time as a service in some way 
through some vehicle. I definitely would recommend Fiverr and Patreon because Fiverr has an affiliate program so you can promote other relevant gigs as an affiliate uh, and also Patreon because like, well, Patreon is a proven uh, source for generating income for content creators, be it a blog or a YouTube channel. So anyways, those are my intermediate ways to make money with a blog. All right, and when you're ready to become a website creative pro, okay, I'll stop. Anyways, these are my three advanced tips for really taking your income to that next level. And it's just a simple three step process. Number one is that you definitely need to create your own more expensive, higher ticket products. So we're talking like 197, 297. Then you need to create an email list because you're not going to make organic sales of those expensive products by people just organically finding your videos or your blog, and then just clicking on something and then buying an expensive product. That's not how it works. Like people need to be, uh, have trust in a relationship with you a little bit and email is still one of the most effective ways. And then last, run paid ads. Yeah, I know, imagine my shock, a business that runs ads, yeah. Yeah, you're building a business. And so these three things in combination are really how you get to that next level in terms of success and your income. Because at this point, you really should already have some type of blog that's getting organic traffic and you're making sales from affiliate marketing, display ads, same with YouTube. And so just take your money and reinvest in your own business and just like run paid ads on whatever platform you like, be it like Facebook, YouTube, Google, and drive traffic to your email list and then promote your own products and products as an affiliate via email. This video is getting long, so I just want to end with one final thought, is, and that's just to continually optimize and improve what it is you're doing online. So what I specifically mean by that is just pay attention to like what's working and do more of that, and then pay attention to like what's not working and then stop doing that. Like there's a reason why I don't talk about like SEO, link building, email marketing that much on this channel because it's just a topic that for me personally just doesn't work that well. Now it can work well for other websites and YouTube channels, etc. But for me, it doesn't work and I'd rather focus on stuff that works like website builders, domain names, web hosting, full length tutorials, etc. And so you just need to do the same with your blog, YouTube channel, whatever secondary traffic source you have and just continually optimize everything. Like take a look at like your email list and think about how you can better improve it. Because if, if you can increase your conversion from like 1% to 2%, you're going to functionally double your income. Like take a look at your blog post, jump into Google search engine console and think about like, how can I make this blog post better? How can I better optimize it for these specific phrases that I'm getting traffic for? Etc. And you just need to continually do that across the board. Just continually learn, apply, and optimize. All right, everyone, that's it for this video on how to make money from blogging. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing, hit that like button. My name is David, website createpro.com. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day. Bye bye.